If you're new in town or just new to this whole podcast thing, you're tuning in to Law by Night, the podcast that discusses all things vampiric with no fear of breaching the masquerade. In this episode, we continue to unravel the mysteries behind the origins, motives, and cultures of the nine major vampiric bloodlines in the world of darkness. This episode will focus on the Stiffs, Clan Semedy. You have seen my true visage once or twice as we have gone on the prowl. Tell me, am I a pretty boy? <laughs> no, of course not. And if you say otherwise, you are a dreadful liar or need some serious help. There are some who are more hideous to behold than I, and I am not referring to other members of Clan Nosferatu. There is a bloodline of kindred who resembles moving corpses, which I believe you may refer to as a zombie. Am I using that right? Anyway, unlike the Nosferatu who merely become deformed and mutilated by their embrace, the body of these kindred are in a constant state of disintegration, skin that just peels away, nose, ears and other appendages just seem to fall and crumble from the canine's face, the nails of their fingers, thumbs and toes crack and splinter, and eyeballs that just droop from the withering socket. And if you have ever complained about the smell of a Nosferatu in Elysium, First of all, fuck you. Second, it pales in comparison to that of the Samadhi I've just described to you, for these stiffs reek of the stench of decay. The stink of death clings onto them wherever they go. So they are a Nosferatu bloodline, you ask? Well, perhaps. It is a simply crude comparison, one understandable for one as young and naive as yourself to make. But remember that the Nosferatu are technically a bloodline of the Niktuku. Like the Niktuku, the Samadhi are one obsessed with death, so perhaps they are a Niktuku offshoot? Again, perhaps. I wouldn't have thought they were closer to them than they are of the Nosferatu, for there does not seem to be any of the angst between the two clans that I am aware of. And also, Associating yourself with the Niktuku carries its own baggage, you see, and it would do the Samadhi great damage to be known as a Niktuku offshoot. But as a clan who are obsessed with death, that would logically point them towards the Cappadocians or the Harbingers of Skulls, who are even closer to their appearance. The Cappadocians could not control the Harbingers, or were foolish enough not to, and let them go about their business to the Caribbean, the universally agreed origins of the clan, where the hot climates affected their already ghastly bodies. Or maybe, the Samadhi are the result of a Giovanni necromantic experiment gone wrong? Alright. Again, perhaps. If you haven't gathered already, no one knows who or what the Samadhi are. The clans I mentioned played their part of the creation of the clan in appearance or mentality. That much is certain. Only the Samadhi know of the true answer to their founding clan, if their leader is not an antediluvian of their own clan. Assuming that they are a bloodline, the Samadhi are one of the youngest bloodlines. They were born out of the slave trade of the 1700s that would act as a catalyst for the creation of America's ideologies and general paranoia, in addition to their world domination. Caribbean plantation owners would beat and torture their slave workers during the day, who in turn would receive punishment from the Samadhi at night. They would take full advantage of their new isolated neighbourhoods, becoming kings and queens of these new domains, presuming that they did not take up the role of pirate, freeing slaves from other ships and stomach the dangers of claiming a sailing matchbox as their haven and domain. Now I say kings and queens, for they are an independent bloodline, so they rarely uphold the titles of prince, archbishop and baron. Well, there is one Samadhi who uses the title of Baron, and that is Baron Samadhi, who is either the founder or the oldest existing member of the Samadhi bloodline. Now, I have not been properly introduced to him, but I have heard enough of him to give you the idea of his appearance. Baron Samadhi is said to be a black male, standing at about five and a half feet tall. He is said to wear a formal attire, similar to myself in that regards. I imagine that would make him all the more horrific because of the fact he is a decaying corpse. His eyes run 
down his face and his exposed muscles are all grey, hanging off him in tatters. The existence of Baron Samadhi is not a simple one, a present that muddies the already filthy waters of the Samadhi origin story. Some would have you believe that he was taken in by the Ministry, the Setites, with his sister Bugette to Haiti, implying that the Samadhi have Setite origins. Certain Samadhi insist that he is an antediluvian who has taken the identity of a hate and death spirit, which I believe is properly defined as a loa. I am also told that the Baron mentioned to a colleague scholar of mine of an ancient precursor of his line, who might be one of the drowned legacies, who allegedly rests in torpor, assuming that they exist. The drowned legacies, in case you do not know, are said to be vampires to have once occupied South America. They are similar to the Liaborn of Africa in that they are some form of kindred variant or a bloodline of some description. Others believe that they are detached from canines altogether, making them closer to the Quajin of East Asia in that regard. Those who believe in their existence presume that they have been secret leaders of South America's kindred populations, playing the Sabbat against the Camarilla for their own inscrutable goals while operating independently from both. What you choose to believe is entirely down to you. But there are other origin stories of the Baron Samadhi, and perhaps the bloodline as a whole, that would further scorn the mythos of Cain. Baron Samadhi and others of his family were said to be Loa, which, as a reminder, are gods in voodoo cult belief, a title that he would have obtained through some practice partaken in his natural life, or one that was created by makers of voodoo. I doubt his origin of power is that simple, but I will get onto that in a moment. The power I speak of is what would become the Samadhi branch of necromancy, most commonly known as Thanatosis, which involves manipulating effects of death and decomposition, exploring the appearance of death in all of its forms. It is similar to certain paths of necromancy, most notably Graves Decay, Corpse and the Monster, and the ye old necromancy name of mortars that came before them. Whilst on their disciplines, some use necromancy and fortitude alongside Thanatosis, whilst others possess Obfuscate instead of fortitude. But returning to the Baron Samadhi, he would encounter a lonely female vampire, known as the Queen Mother, who was crying tears of blood about the loneliness of existence. Probably not the first kindred to do so, and definitely won't be the last. Am I right, Neonate? <laughs> Anyway, he gave her the company she sought for, where they discussed life, death, vampires, and a little bit of music, I am told. She would embrace him before laughing her final laughs as the sun would end her. What would result is the Baron Samadhi becoming a lower and a vampire, which is no different from how we are human and vampire. There is a similar tale that describes Samadhi as a fugitive who was being hunted for his powers of death were too great before hiding in the Caribbean, a collection of islands not ruled by those of the Ivory Tower or Sword of Cain. The plantations would arrive with slaves in tow, and Samadhi would keep to himself, whilst building and feeding the idea of him being a loa. When Kindred did try and take the Caribbean, Baron Samadhi would don the top hat that would probably be used as the clan symbol and defend his domain. Some would place a variant of this story, which has Augustus Giovanni force Samadhi out of his home, which would result in Samadhi travelling to the Caribbean. Now, you probably know that the two would meet in Venice during the 19th century and would strike a deal that would presumably ensure the survival of the other, a deal that neither clan are particularly happy about. No one is entirely sure what conspired, except Samadhi and Augustus. One short story you may be told has the Baron Samadhi attempt to deliver the true vessel to Augustus but was raided by Setites on his way. The true vessel, as a reminder to you, was supposed to contain the remaining aspects of Cappadocia's blood and soul, which would make Augustus become a true antediluvian if one believes that vessel exists. Another story I've heard from a Samadhi I interrogated a while ago is a little more… vague. Augustus would meet with Baron Samadhi to question the uses of necromancy and how to deal with lowers. Lowers are ghosts, you see, but not all ghosts are lower. Augustus was said to ignore the Baron's advice and the Giovanni would suffer because of it. Being the reckless fool I believe Augustus to be, he would claim war over the Samadhi. They would settle this in a meeting, resulting in a standstill of sorts. There are many tales regarding this meeting, none of which I can be certain of being true or not. Perhaps if you meet a Samadhi, or maybe the Baron himself, they'll tell you. Unlikely, but you never know. 
Should they inform you of their origins, I insist you tell me. It is the least you can do for bombarding me with your battalion of questions these last few weeks. <laughs> The Samadhi do not solely survive in the Caribbean these modern nights. Naturally, they usually exist by themselves, occasionally in pairs. They are easy enough to cooperate with, but require a bit more effort than others to form said relationships with. The Camarilla are naturally concerned about the presence of such canines in their city, given they are walking corpses. The Sabat, on the other hand, don't give two shits how they look, but the Samadhi object to their senseless murder. Death is natural, and having it encouraged by the Sword of Cain isn't ideal for their beliefs and practices. That said, they tend to gravitate towards the Serpents of Light, the followers of Set Anti-Tribu. Even their own Setite necromancy soils the Baron's name. And like most of us, the Samadhi just don't understand the Anarchs. The movement does, however, have a variety of criminal contacts at their disposal, which is important for the Samadhi, as is the case with many kindred. With their abilities and need to putrefy flesh to meet their own ends, they can be useful assassins. And if someone wants someone else dead, the client isn't all really too bothered with how they look. But in most recent years, I have heard that the Samadhi have joined the other vampiric necromancers who now call themselves Hakata to gain safety in numbers against the Second Inquisition and potentially the other clans and sects. With their abilities to cause limbs and body parts to drop off, they would become quite useful in hiding evidence as it were. <laughs> I am told that they occasionally call themselves the Descendants of the Baron now, which is certainly a bit more of a mouthful and remarkably pompous, a word I would rarely use to describe the Samadhi at all. But not all of them have joined this new family. Those who do not go by the prefix of Hakata or are independent have joined the Ministry in the Anarch movement. It is said that many of these Hakata Samadhi have been affected by mysterious circumstances within the blood, suffering the same weakness as the Giovanni, which is that the kiss offers great pain. In addition to this, they also now share the disciplines of the Cappadocians and Harbingers of Skulls, which are Fortitude, or Specs, and Oblivion, otherwise known as Necromancy. Most interesting, however, is that they no longer suffer from the curse of extreme decay as their sires did, although they can manifest the countenance at will, and it does manifest to some extent whenever they feed. Ew. Many are puzzled by these strange occurrences in their blood and whether they are truly happy with this change. You may be thinking as to how the Samadhi make their mark now they are not as hideous as before. Being walking corpses who turn to ash on command and cause those around them to rot as they do is not what makes a Samadhi. Their origins and their culture revolve around voodoo, hoodoo, or voodon, practices that the ones running the African slave businesses forbid them from their culture, resulting in the locals to create their own faith based on such African belief. You may be young and naive enough to think that the three V's are all the same, but get a Catholic, Protestant, and Baptist in the same room and get them to discuss their faiths to you, then tell me that they're all the same. There is also Samadhi's willingness to join Hakata, to be closer to the Giovanni enemies. Who really wants to be happy working with a Giovanni? Not even the Giovanni like working with the Giovanni. It is a move, however, that does make sense. The Giovanni can easily manipulate spirits, whilst the Samadhi can decompose bodies, which can make them excellent partners, should they choose to cooperate peacefully. And as the two clans run in similar circles, it can make the efforts of practicing necromancy easier for all parties involved. That hatred between the two clans run deep, making their relationship a difficult one, which makes the alliance all the more babbling. What you have probably failed to even think about is what the Baron Samadhi is up to, for I doubt he and the rest of his clan decided to align themselves with the Giovanni just so they could be bosom buddies. We know very little of the clan's motives and what he and his clan plan to do with the Hakata sect. Somehow, the Baron managed to leave the Giovanni mausoleum with his unlife intact a few minutes after whatever was exchanged between that infamous meeting. The Baron, presumably a Methuselah, was able to survive an encounter with an antediluvian, which to me suggests there is a lot of power within the Baron Samadhi that we have yet to uncover. The Stiffs are not a bloodline to be scoffed at for being walking corpses. They are powerful necromancers that know it is better to proceed with caution when dealing with ghosts and lowers, something that is often overlooked by the common necromancer. And that simple thinking puts the Samadhi leagues ahead 
of their deathly cousins. To be kept updated, follow the Law by Night VTM Twitter and Instagram pages to find out when we will upload each episode. You can also find out by subscribing to the YouTube channel and clicking on the little bell as you'll be immediately notified when the latest episode is live. Until next time, farewell.